Hello and welcome to this tutorial on data transformation and aggregation. Many newcomers to R attempt to summarize data frames and matrices by writing their own code. While in other programming languages this is understandable, R provides a rich set of functions for data transformation and aggregation. During this session I'll be working with two data sets. The first is MTCars, which is an internal data set to R. That is, any installation of R contains this data set. It's a 32-row data frame containing information on cars from the year 1974. There are a number of variables of interest, such as miles per gallon, number of cylinders, horsepower, weight, etc. The second data set I'll be working with is a 1,000 row by 6 column matrix. This construct shows up frequently in bioinformatics. As an example, each row could represent a patient, each column could represent a biomarker, perhaps an expression level or a fold change. Using this data as an example, suppose that we wanted to compute the relative percentages of biomarker 1 across all patients. To do this, we would take each element in column 1 and divide it by the sum of column 1 and multiply that by 100. We could then apply this same procedure over each column in the matrix. A newcomer to R might approach this using standard programming constructs such as a double for loop, that is for each row, then process each column in that row. Here is an example of what this approach might look like. We now have a matrix whose columns represent relative percentages. That is, for any given column in this matrix, the sum should be equal to 100. So our approach worked, but does it generalize? As an example, what if we wanted to compute the relative percentages across the rows? Or what if we wanted to change what it is we were computing? Perhaps compute a weighted percentage. We would have no choice except to go back and recode the double for loop. However, R provides a function that simplifies this kind of activity. It's called the apply function. The call to the apply function, in effect, replaces the double for loop. It is a very clean interface. In this example, the arguments we provide are the matrix, the input matrix itself, the margin, that is the rows or the columns we wish to apply the function to, in this case the columns, and finally the function that we wish to apply. I've gone ahead and done that for you. So now we have a matrix which, as before, has the relative percentages in the columns, such that the sum of any column should be equal to 100. While the apply function can easily be used to transform data, it is more commonly used to summarize or aggregate data. As an example, we could take our matrix and use the apply function to easily find the mean of every column. In general, we can supply an arbitrary function, especially those that are already available to us in R. If we wanted to apply the function across the row, we would simply specify a 1 as opposed to a 2. However, given that we have 1,000 rows, the output can be a little messy here. A primary reason that I'm focusing on the apply command is because it expects to manipulate or accept as input matrices and data frames, which are two of the more common data types that you will encounter when using R. Now, if you look at the help pages for apply, you'll see that there are about five or six other commands from this family, each of which expects to work on a specific data type. Now, since this video is primarily concerned with data aggregation, I'll only focus on a couple of them. The apply command is particularly important. Let me introduce the by command at this point. It's used to summarize one or more continuous variables from a data set in terms of one or more grouping variables. Let's focus on the empty cars data set. If you need a reminder on what that looks like, here it is. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to summarize or determine the mean average uh, of cars relative to their transmission type, automatic versus manual, as well as the number of cylinders. The by command provides a very easy way to do this. So what you see here is that we are passing the uh, variable to be summarized and we're giving it a list of grouping variables and the function. What we get back is a breakdown. So for the four cylinder cars we have automatic versus manual and we can see the respective uh, mean mileage for each. So this is a very rapid way to, to do some summary. 
It is important to note that we aren't restricted to summarizing just a single continuous variable. In this next example, I'll use the by command to summarize the mean of the horsepower and weight as grouped by transmission type. Also note that in this example, I'm using the combined function to indicate which variables it is I'd wish to summarize. Note that in this case we get a very neat and clean summary of the horsepower and weight as separated by transmission type. If you review the documentation for the by command, you will see that it is a wrapper for the tapply command. The tapply command expects to work in general on a vector. It works similarly as before, as in the by command, in that we can summarize a continuous variable in terms of a grouping variable. The results are not unlike what we've seen previously. However, the by command is more general in approach since it expects to work on a data frame or possibly a matrix. The rule is, is that if you know you're working specifically with a vector, then you can use the tapply command. However, I recommend that it's easier to remember the by command and work with that since it too can work with vectors. Next up, we'll take a look at the aggregate function. As the name suggests, this function is designed specifically to summarize and aggregate data. It works on any R object that can be coerced into a data frame. It can also work on time series, so in some respects, it's more general than the by function. Let's take a spin. In this first example, we will summarize uh, miles per gallon versus transmission type. Now what we see here is not drastically unlike what we've seen before. We can use the same type of argument specification. In this case, I'm grouping columns using the combined function. I'm passing a list as the second argument to indicate my grouping variables. And finally, I'm specifying a function. In the next example here, I'm summarizing average miles per gallon and average horsepower across transmission type. Of course, we can include more than one grouping variable, as in the third example. You see that we get a nice clean list that indicates uh, that mean information for each cylinder type across each transmission type. There are only two transmission types here, but we have three cylinder types. Now, it's also useful to point out that aggregate has a formulaic interface. In other words, it will support a formula specification. Why would you want to consider this? It's important to note that many functions in R support a formula interface, in particular the linear modeling functions, LM, as well as the lattice graphics. So if you're more inclined to work with this type of interface, perhaps you would be attracted to this. So this example, once again, I'm summarizing miles per, gallon, miles per gallon in terms of transmission type, but the tilde is indicating the grouping variable. So we'll get information, we'll get a summary as we did before. In this next example, I'm looking at miles per gallon as grouped by transmission type and cylinder. So the plus is adding to the grouping. And in the next example, I wish to summarize these three continuous variables in terms of these grouping variables. Notice the tilde, once again, sets off or indicates which variables I'm going to use as grouping. The plus adds to the grouping. The C bind here simply groups the three continuous variables. I like to point out that aggregate uses two interfaces simply because when you review literature, research papers, look at textbooks, manuals, you are going to see reference to both types of interfaces. I advise for you, at least early on when you're learning the function, to pick one interface and stick with it until you're comfortable with it. Then you can move over to the other.